Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Glock. Uh, I'm serving uh, in France with my wife Sylvie and our three children who are now grown and uh, we have the privilege of living in Paris. I've been uh, serving often among the assemblies and since 2001 directly with the assemblies and in the last couple years uh, even more directly because I've been uh, privileged to uh, work alongside other uh, full-time workers who seek to encourage and support church planning in France. And then in 2015, uh, Sylvie and I were looking for uh, a new area of ministry. Um, we wanted to be involved in more in church planning, and an opportunity opened for us uh, at the suggestion of some national leaders to come to Paris. And in the city itself, there were five assemblies who were mainly all aging, somewhat struggling, and trying to figure out how do we how do we move forward um, and basically the the goal was just to basically get to know each other better and to figure out how we could work together um, to be the people that god wanted us to be for paris today and we have seen uh, this local assembly here grow from a small about 10 to 15 people on a sunday morning to now where we're welcoming well over 40. Uh, we've seen a number of baptisms and uh, we are very encouraged by that and also in the other assemblies, there have been great changes. Uh, new leadership, uh, new projects, and we see God at work. But as we've gone through these last five years, we're now thinking about a new phase. And this is really what we're thinking about for Paris is probably true for, for all of France and probably all of Europe. The huge challenge we see is uh, how do we reach people with the gospel now uh, and we really mean people who live in our neighborhoods and one of the things that we have seen and again it goes back to what I said earlier about us being able to live here uh, the difference it makes to actually live in a neighborhood and to be able to be among the people there to understand what the needs are and to be able to respond so this is one of the, been the main one of the first things I would say when we think about ministry in Europe or ministry in France or ministry in a major city is we need to be among the people. Uh, and this is what we've seen consistently among the assemblies that we've been helping, uh, where there is a consistent presence, not only on Sunday mornings, but also during the week. It changes the dynamic. It changes the way people see the church. And also it enables us in terms of evangelism to really have meaningful impact with people uh, in the neighborhoods. When we think about what Jesus taught us about the importance of loving one another, he was saying, as we love one another, we are saying something about who God is, but also we are saying something to the world about who Jesus Christ is. So the world needs to see our communities. The world needs to see us interacting with each other to understand that the gospel is not just something that's intellectual, but it's something that's lived. And so one of the things that we've done, which is in many ways uncomfortable, we took the cardboard down, and on a Sunday morning when we worship here, we see people passing by. And the people see us as we break bread together. The people see us as the word is preached. And it's a real challenge. But we believe that as the world sees God's people in action, both as a corporate body and also as we move out with love into our neighborhoods, the gospel is demonstrated. And then, of course, the gospel also needs to be preached. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for praying for France, praying for Paris. Uh, I would say that as I speak this message to you, as I'm talking to you, I'm praying for you, wherever you are, uh, because each of us has a responsibility. Each of us is called to be witnesses knowing that as we demonstrate Christ-like love among ourselves, and as we proclaim the gospel, the world around us will come and know who Christ is. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hi, this is Peter Mead and Melanie. My wife and I, as well as four of our six children, are based in Chippenham in England, where we are involved in a church plant, Trinity Chippenham. And this is a church that we helped to start eight years ago. So what are the driving kind of principles and guidelines for us? Most foundationally, most basically, 
you have to have a personal relationship with the Lord that is healthy. I suppose we could put it this way, that in order to be contagious, you have to be, first of all, infected. If we want to be contagiously spreading the love of God and delight in Jesus and so on, then we need to be personally infected with that same passion and love for the sake of evangelism, for the sake of leadership, for casting vision or trying to motivate people in a, a ministry type of situation. The most important thing really is how are we doing with the Lord? Are we infectious uh, because we, uh, we have what we want them to have? Close behind that is the value of healthy relationships in the family, the value of a healthy marriage and healthy parenting. We're not perfect. We're not perfect in our walk with the Lord, and we're definitely not perfect in our relationships with each other. It's, it's a work in progress, of course. But there's something incredibly life-giving about a healthy Christian family, and that, that the need for that is huge. In Britain, in Europe, people just don't see that uh, in everyday life, a healthy, together Christian family. Just think about the dining table. We have a meal together in the evening, and uh, it's sometimes chaotic and sometimes frustrating, and, and it's never perfect. And yet for some people, they come in and they, they've never experienced it. In their entire life, they've never known what it is to sit together as a family, and they will enjoy the chaos. They will love it and invite themselves to come again. That hospitality and informal relational ministry is so important uh, because the life and health of the family can spill out and kind of embrace others. And we've seen that. And Melanie is uh, constantly looking for opportunities to give hospitality, to welcome people into our home uh, and to uh, to kind of infect with hopefully what we've got, what we've been blessed with. When we started Trinity, we weren't really wanting in any way to replicate tradition and just to get a church up and running. We wanted it to be healthy and vibrant. Part of that is Bible teaching. Obviously, I'm involved in teaching and training preachers. I'm passionate about it, but it's because I believe that it's so important. The Bible teaching in the church creates the environment. It creates the context in which the relationships and the conversations and the discipleship and evangelism can all take place. And so solid Bible teaching uh, that isn't above people's heads, but is infectious, is clear, it's engaging, uh, it's relevant to their lives, helping them on the real basic stuff. We've noticed how much we go back to the basics, you know, from different angles, biblically. We realize that Maybe in the past, the evangelistic strategy could be primarily proclamation to strangers. And that as strangers responded to the message, then they would come into the church. But today it's maybe the other way around. Today people are drawn to the community of the church. And then in the context of that community, the spirit and the word of God and the preaching and the conversations all work together to hopefully bring them to faith in Jesus. Just this year, we've started a new ministry, which is a debt center, a Christian debt center, so that people who are in trouble financially uh, are able to access help. A big part of that is that as they are receiving help with their finances, they're being offered community and friendship and uh, relaxed events where they can just come and meet Christians and emerge from the isolation of uh, crippling debts. I suppose where my gifting lies in terms of teaching and training and equipping spills out beyond the church into those other spheres, the different ministry settings where I get to do Bible teaching and preaching, where I get to offer theological training or coaching and mentoring of preachers. And so there's these different settings for, for what I get to do. But even in those, the, the logic is the same. We want to multiply ministry that shares God's heart so that there are Bible-fed, Jesus-captivated, healthy churches in Britain, in Europe, wherever we can help to influence it, because it's healthy churches that are God's primary uh, tool for reaching Europe, for reaching the lost. I hope that's helpful. Thanks so much. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah and I am a math teacher at Black Forest Academy. BFA is an international Christian boarding school located in southwest Germany. Over 85% of our student population are children of missionaries. And 
they represent 59 different countries this year. That means that we are working with missionaries in over 50 different countries by caring for and providing an education for their students and in part enabling them to be able to serve where they're located well because they know that their child's being taken care of. Um, BFA has three different components to it. One is our residence life program, one's our school, and the other is our student life program. So I'll just walk through the three of them. Our first is res life. And so residence life, we have six dorms that are scattered throughout the town of Condern. Two of them are girls dorms, two of them are boys dorms, and two of them are integrated dorms. And they have about 20 students each, and so we roughly have 120 students in our residence life program. Um, and each dorm has four to five staff members that come together and work as a team to care for these students. So that's taking students to the doctors, that's making sure that they're fed, that's making sure they get their homework done, and really just making sure that they're healthy physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and just making sure that they're healthy and coming alongside of them um, on the daily life. And then our schooling program are, is to provide a quality education for these students. Um, some of them have been homeschooled their whole life. Some of them wanted to speak in English before they go to a different college that's gonna be in English. And so they come here or maybe they just needed to learn how to be social and they came to BFA or they just needed an education that was a better suited for them. And so in my classroom, sometimes that's explaining extra words that I wasn't anticipating to explain or hearing students in the back talking Korean and also hearing them bring in different concepts or the different ways that they had learned the same material, but in a different way and being able to work with them to build off what they know and to bridge that gap, whether it's through um, a language barrier or through a content missing because of being moving around from different um, education systems. And then our student life program, we have sports that students can do. So that's volleyball, basketball, cross country, track and field, and soccer are sports. And we have a theater program for students to be able to be in a play or musical, as well as many different ministry opportunities for them to be leaders. So we have an Awana program that high school students can be leaders for elementary school students. And yeah, they have all those different opportunities as well as some other clubs. And for me, I spent my first two years as a resident life, um, as a resident assistant in a girls dorm. And so I spent two years caring for students on a daily life. And I just loved being able to walk alongside those students and just be with them as they grew into people and seeing them go from freshmen or underclassmen over to upperclassmen and yeah, just see their growth and be able to just encourage them on a daily basis. And then now I am a math teacher and I get to be in a math classroom with some of these students and some of them do we have some that are really strong in math and some that struggle. And I really, for those types of students, I get to just walk alongside and encourage them and to get to show them how much they actually know and then build up what they know into what we're learning. And I love that. In our student life, I've been in Awana. I've helped in a theater program. What I also like to do when I'm not in the classroom is to sub in dorms. So once a week, I'll go into a dorm and just help the dorm staff. So mostly that looks like just going in and cooking whatever they need me to cook that day. And that is wonderful for them and wonderful for me to be able to go back into the dorm. Um, I'm also an advisory teacher, which means that I go and I sit with high school seniors and we have a how to adult curriculum and we just talk to them. Sometimes we're checking in with them to see how they're doing and other times we're teaching them what does it look like to write a resume and to be able to build that as they graduate from BFA, how can we help build that foundation for them to be successful after graduation. So thank you. Thank you for your support and your prayers and I truly do appreciate it. 
Um, if you could be praying for my first year teaching, every day is a new day and I'm constantly learning so many new things and I would appreciate prayers for that. As well as for our students, just for them to continue to encounter the Lord and to choose to follow him each and every day. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you, everyone.